Uh, thank you, Susan, and thank you all for joining us this afternoon for our showcase. Those of you that have taken my classes before at Berkeley, Ali, know that I have tended to focus on the founding generation, the Revolutionary War period, the, the Constitutional Era, and the first couple of uh, administrations of the New Republic. I've also taught a great deal about the Civil War era, the events leading up to the war in the 1850s, the war itself, and then the Reconstruction era, uh, covering the 15 or so years after the Civil War. What I haven't addressed in my time at Berkeley is the period in between these two seminal periods in American history. The period of 1815 to 1850 is somewhat the equi historical equivalent of flyover country for a lot of Americans. We know that it's there, but we don't perhaps pay as much attention to it as we really should because this period is remarkably fertile uh, for the events that are going to follow uh, during the, the Civil War era. M much of the foundation for later American history is laid down during this 35 year period of time, which I'll be covering in this course that'll be taught on Wednesday mornings uh, at 9.30, 9.30 to 11. This period stretches from the end of the War of 1812, which you might say is the last chapter in the revolutionary or the founding era of our nation. And it ends with 1850. And the reason I chose that as our terminus is that that was the date of the famous Compromise of 1850, which admitted California to the Union as a free state. Uh, seemingly uh, a positive development in our, in our nation's history, but it also touched off a firestorm of controversy between Southerners and Northerners, which is going to set us directly on the path of civil war. So in this 35 year period of time, I'm going to be stressing the events between those two watershed moments in our history. We'll be covering some of the economic developments of this period. This is the time when America evolves out of a rather primitive, almost developing world kind of economy that we had lived under during our first two or three decades as, a, as an independent nation. Um, we'll be looking at the rise of the Cotton Kingdom, the development of industrialization in the Northeast part of the nation, and what ramifications that had for daily life for Americans. The fact that we now had far more wealth and and disposable income than we had ever had before. We'll also look at the political developments of this period. Uh, this is commonly known as the age of Jackson, a time when the common man rises to the fore in, in American politics. Prior to 1815, the nation's politics essentially was the, the purview of well-established elites, mostly from Virginia. And that's going to all change during our period. We're going to see that voting requirements virtually disappear. All white males are, are given the franchise virtually by the end of our period. Uh, and consequently, uh, the, the policies of the nation's leaders change because they're now paying attention to a different constituency. We'll look at the major religious upheavals of this period. This is a period in which Americans invent whole new religions out of whole cloth uh, and, and start gathering adherents by the hundreds of thousands and in some cases even by the millions. We'll look at the rise of the Mormon church, the Seventh-day Adventists, uh, the millennial cults that flourished around this time. It's a, it's a very zestful period of religious enthusiasm. That's the word they would have used at that time. Uh, we'll also look at the technological changes because I think two particular breakthroughs in, in uh, science and technology marked this period and set it off from anything that had gone before. And that's the development of the telegraph and the rise of the railroads. This, these two breakthroughs help to kind of collapse time and space in a way that changes the way business is done on every level in America. Real quickly, some of the personalities we'll be looking at in the course, we'll be uh, delving into the life of Andrew Jackson because he has his fingerprints all over this period. 
Uh, we'll look at the, the political career of Henry Clay. That's Andrew Jackson's prime rival for, for national leadership at this time. Uh, we'll also look at Daniel Webster, the famous Massachusetts senator uh, and statesman. We'll be taking a look at James Polk, the, the president who uh, provoked a war with Mexico, which results in the nation doubling in size virtually overnight. Uh, and then we'll also look at some of the cultural figures of the period, stressing uh, the transcendentalist movement in New England and in the last lecture of the of the class, uh, I'll be going into the contributions of uh, Emerson and Henry David Thoreau to our, our national consciousness. So I think it's going to be an interesting eight weeks together. Uh, it's a period that deserves close scrutiny. And I hope that at the end of this time, we'll all uh, know a little bit more about how these events tie in with what went before and what comes after 1850. I'll make sure that uh, Matt has a reading list and our um, weekly postings very shortly. As soon as that's available to be posted, I'll, I'll send those along to Matt so you can kind of get a head start if you'd like. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to getting started. That'll be on March the 31st, 9.30 a.m. Thank you once again, Susan, and we'll see you then.